Hello, this is Kaylee Gonzalez. Thank you for joining me on this tutorial video covering what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2023 with focus on the 3D Experience platform. I'm going to be covering the enhancements and new functionality with the 3D Creator role and the XDesign application, which really is a CAD-based software inside of the cloud. We're gonna start with sketching and part creation before we talk about some of the new information inside of the PCB file input. We're going to see support for IDF file types now available inside of XDesign. We're also going to introduce the thread feature, which has been integrated into XDesign as well. This is a great tool for adding standard thread information to your files. And then we'll conclude with enhancements to assemblies and specifically looking at mate functionality inside of XDesign. We're gonna start with sketching and part creation. We're gonna see specifically user parameters, a new design assistant function, the ability to do command parking, and some great enhancements to variable fillets. I'm going to start out inside of my web browser. As you can see, I'm inside of my XDesign application. I currently have an assembly open in one instance of my XDesign app. Now, I'm not going to be utilizing the assembly right now. However, we will get to that later on in the tutorial. So I'm going to actually expand my XDesign application and start a new component. Now, when I start a new component, I'm first going to give this the name for battery enclosure. The location is really my collaborative space, which is where I want the file to be saved. And the leader is indicating what type of permissions I have within that collaborative space. Once my battery enclosure part has started, I'm inside of a blank environment. One of the first things I'm going to do is show my origin. I always like to see that when I'm going to be sketching or creating anything from scratch. Now inside of this tutorial, I'm going to cover a lot of basic information, but I, I might skip some steps in order to focus more on the enhancements. First thing I'm going to do is choose a face or a plane in order to start my initial sketch. Now, XDesign uses quite a few on-screen callouts. So as we go through the tutorial, please make sure that you're paying attention to these small boxes because that's where a lot of items I'm clicking on are actually going to be located. So I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new sketch. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is just start with some very basic geometry, just starting with a center rectangle. Now, XDesign has some amazing functionality built inside of it already that allows me to convert sketch entities. So for example, I can convert this line into an arc, a spline, or an ellipse. This is an actual conversion of sketch geometry, and this is really a phenomenal tool to make more complicated geometry very, very quickly. It's actually much faster than trying to sketch this completely from scratch with these arcs and curves. Really what I'm doing right now is utilizing my sketch level mirror in order to maintain symmetry in the part and to capture those arcs on both sides. XDesign utilizes on-screen shortcuts, including this shortcut ring or mouse gestures, in order for me to grab commonly used features. One of those is my dimensioning tool, which I use very frequently. I can launch that automatically in order to start grabbing my overall size dimension. Now, once my dimension has been grabbed, I'm actually ready to do a sketch fillet. Now, my sketch fillet is going to round out these corners. I can launch that using my shortcut ring. And from here, I can simply drag my cursor across the corners. I have tangent arcs that are automatically created. They're all the same size, and this makes updating my sketch very fast and very efficient. From here, I want this sketch to still be fully defined, so I'm going to go through and continue to add my dimensions. You're going to notice that the sketch is going to automatically adjust its shape as dimensions are added, and it is going to turn from royal blue to black when fully defined. Once my sketch is done, I'm ready to turn this into a feature. XDesign actually utilizes something called super features, which allows me to go between an extrude, a revolve, or a sweep really at any point in time. I don't have to delete the feature or recreate it, so I have a lot of flexibility inside of a single feature. I can even choose whether this is going to be a solid, a thin, or a surface. I'm going to add my end conditions and even add a draft angle directly into my resulting feature. This is going to ensure I have my last little bit of information for my final shape. 
Now I am going to actually create a shell feature and another revolve along the back side, but I'm going to skip over that so that I can start talking about some of the newer functionality. Now what I'm going to start preparing for here is I'm actually going to start creating my information for a sweat boss base. I just went ahead and grab this silhouette edge using convert entities and my trim entities tool. What I'm doing next is creating the profile for my sweep. And I want to make sure that this bottom line is actually not going to be perfectly horizontal because there is that 0.5 degree draft. So I can manipulate sketch relations at any time in XDesign and verify to make sure I have indeed added all of them as well. As I start adding dimensions, the first two dimensions I'm going to add using the normal process, but the third dimension, the, the width of this rectangle, is actually going to be driven by a user parameter. User parameters can actually be created from the design tree. This actually allows me to create a parameter such as length, thickness, add a dimension, and then I can apply this to several sketch dimensions, assemblies, however I want to apply them to. And this allows the model to update very predictably, but I can also propagate changes very quickly using single bits of information. So here we have an example of utilizing user parameters now available in XDesign. The selection tools in XDesign are really actually pretty good. This tangent selection screen appears directly on my screen and it allows me to choose a bunch of tangent edges in just a couple of seconds. So selection for these types of more complex features is very fast and efficient. Now I need to add some additional material onto this particular flange. And again, I'm not necessarily going to show you all of the sketching involved, but I'm going to show you kind of the last portion of this sketch, which is the circle. Now this circle here is really going to be like a hole. Now XDesign is introducing their design assistant function. The design assistant actually uses artificial intelligence to make predictions on where additional instances of that sketch would be created. There's no setup involved in this. I don't have to make any other reference geometry or any other type of setup actions. I can simply click the design expert, accept it, and I have those additional instances ready to go in just a couple of seconds. This is a great tool to really minimize the amount of manual sketching that we have to do for some of these very common types of features. And here we can see how those four holes have actually been added. We're gonna see another example of the design assistant here on the back side. I have a series of holes or circles that I'm going to use to create a boss with a hole in it. And again, my design assistant allows us to predict the placement of 12 additional circles. This happens in just a couple of moments. Again, no setup, very fast way to reduce a lot of manual sketching or a lot of manual setup. Now, perhaps I want the four corner bosses to be a little bit thicker in size or a little bit longer in their extrusion. I can make use of command parking, which allows me to access sketching and even reference geometry right within my feature, or I can actually skip the sketch completely. XDesign does support direct editing. What I mean by that is instead of sketching, I can just choose the faces and the extrusion will complete automatically. Again, this is a great productivity enhancement that actually reduces a lot of work for the end user by not having to duplicate information by creating those sketches. Now the enhancements to fillets and variable fillets I found to be very exciting. What I'm doing now is using my design assistant in order to make additional predictions on where additional fillets would be placed. But now pay attention to the fact that I'm still inside of the same fillet parameter. I'm going to change to a variable fillet. From here, I can then add a variance point to any of these particular fillets. Fillets that don't have a second variance point behave like a constant size fillet. Ones that I do add variance points to, I can then click and drag to create these very nice, highly curved and highly customized fillets. 
What's also really interesting here is every single fillet could potentially be different, even though I am inside of a single function. I find this to be very exciting because it's going to keep my tree very short. I'm not going to have a ton of fillet features either scattered throughout or at the end of my tree that I have to manage. It's a lot of flexibility like this that's really making it easier than ever to make your designs inside of XDesign. So we've actually covered quite a bit of information inside of this part and sketching portion. You saw how uh, excellent the design assistant is as far as utilizing that artificial intelligence to make predictions. We also were able to utilize user parameters, command parking, and then of course all of the enhancements to variable fillets are there as well. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is the support for IDF file types by being able to import PCB files directly into XDesign. This is something that is brand new and something that we were excited to see. So we'll take a look at this process. I'm going to go back into XDesign and I'm going to actually drag my battery enclosure into my assembly. I'm doing this because I want to insert not only the battery enclosure, but my PCB board into the assembly. So I'm just kind of prepping myself for that. Once I'm ready to insert my PCB board, I'm going to go down to my action bar and I'm going to choose the import option. This will allow me to choose my file format. My IDF is now just included in the list. And here I'm actually pulling this from a file on my system, although you could pull this from your 3D drive. And this is allowing me to now just pull in those native IDF file types. I want to insert into this component and I'm only going to choose one instance, although I could have multiple instances inserted if I wanted. And here we can see our PCB board fully inserted into our design. So once that PCB file is inserted, we're ready to go on to the next feature, which is being able to apply a thread specifically to a part inside of this design. And now this is going to be ideal if you do any type of SDLs, 3D printing, or prototypes where you actually need the physical thread geometry. So inside of my overall assembly, I'm going to locate my camera mount component inside of my design tree. And by right clicking on that, I can actually open any component from my design tree. The next component is going to go ahead and open. It's just an individual component file. Now where the thread feature is located is in the features tab of my action bar. And it might either say whole or thread depending on which one you had selected. This is going to allow me to choose a cylindrical edge as well as a face to stop my, my feature. I can choose from a variety of standard thread information and even standard thread sizes. I can also make this a cosmetic thread, a physical thread, or I can do a cut or extrusion type of thread geometry. So again, lots of flexibility inside of the thread tool inside of just that single individual function. And here we can see that nice thread appear on our model. Now that we've added that thread feature, we've added the PCB files, we created the battery enclosure, we're ready to start talking a little bit more about our assemblies and some of the enhancements into mates, specifically into smart mates or the mate helper and the copy with mates function. So back into my assembly, we're actually going to see how we can add mates directly in XDesign using some pretty common functions. Now I'm, I'm actually accessing this using control click and there's actually an on-screen call out that I was able to add this mate into. I'm gonna do another one. So if that was a little bit fast, you're gonna see it again here very soon. So again, we're doing a control click action. So I'm gonna choose a face and I'm actually going to then hold control and choose a second face. This is going to trigger a mate helper or uh, mates bar where I can add a coincident mate. This is great for standard mates such as concentric, coincident, tangent, parallel, perpendicular. We can add all of those using the, the mate helper. We can also go ahead and utilize a function called copy with mates. 
Copy with mates allows us to choose an existing component that has already been successfully mated into the design and simply add another instance and choose similar references. So in this case, with this bearing, I'm going to choose another cylindrical face and another flat face. And I'm going to do this a couple of times so I can click copy and repeat and I can continue to add this information. Again, the idea here is it's been further streamlined as far as importing this process and being able to make these mates very, very quickly. XDesign does have the ability to do some type of motion or almost like an animation. So if we wanted to see these gears, I'm actually going to launch something called mechanism. Now I'm not going to go through the process to create every portion of this or every step to create this animation, but what we can do is choose specific items in this design that we want to be included. We can also choose specific mates that we want to be included as part of the calculation. Once we have selected everything and we've gone through the mechanism setup, we will be able to have the ability to really analyze motion inside of XDesign to make sure everything is going to be working and functioning as expected. So thank you for joining me on today's tutorial going through some of the new productivity enhancements to 3D Creator and XDesign. We saw sketching and part creation with user parameters, design assistant, command parking, and variable fillets, the support for IDF file types, the introduction of the thread feature in parts and assemblies. So if you had any questions about anything that you saw today, please feel free to reach out to us here at MLC CAD Systems. We're happy to answer any questions you have over 3D Creator and XDesign, as well as the 3D Experience platform in general. Thank you very much and have a great day.